Welcome to part 3 of our solid body guitar project. In this video we're going to 3D sculpt the guitar on our Benchtop Pro CNC machine. We've already created the indexing features on our spoil board. Now we'll create matching indexing features on the stock. I'll calibrate my Z height using the Auto Z touch plate and the Auto Tool 0 button. And I can load and run the work holding G code that we created in part 2. I'll add dowels to the stock and position it over the spoil board, finding the matching holes. And I'll secure, in this case by clamps, but you could also use a vacuum setup. I'll start by loading and running the bottom side decode that we created in part two. As you may recall, this program starts with a face operation. It's gonna leave a nice, smooth, and true surface. Now the machine's going to create the electronics cavity pocket. We're doing this first as a 2D operation, and then to mimic the 3D surface that's going to be on the other side, we'll do a 3D clearing. The first pass essentially establishes the shelf for our electronics cover, and now the pocket operation will proceed at full depth to cut at a quarter inch. Now the machine will mark where the neck mounting hole should go. As Jeff mentioned, we'd probably drill these all the way through in future guitars. And finally, we're going to drill the indexing features. This will allow us to flip this stock and preserve and align the relationship between the top side and bottom side of the guitar. This way everything when we cut through will be just where it should be. I'll install the dowels and flip and re-secure the stock. And just to be safe, I'll re-zero the tool. And now I can load and run the top side G-code. First operation in this program is the 3D adaptive clearing. And this will efficiently remove excess material, leaving just a small amount behind for the finishing contouring passes. And next, the machine will start the 3D finishing pass. These are 3D parallel strategy tool pass. And we're using, again, the quarter inch flat end mill. Just because of the nature of the geometry, we can get away with using the edge of this tool instead of a bowl nose or ball nose tool. Now I'll switch to 1 8 inch flat end mill, and this is going to do the contour cuts to open the cavity for our electronic components to poke through. And we'll auto zero this tool. And do the 2D contour operation. Just nice gentle cuts, and this will allow the shaft of our knobs and switches to come through. and we'll mark the locating holes for the bridge. Again, not drilling them. I think in future versions we'd go ahead and just drill these out too. And another tool change to the one half inch flat end mill. And this is gonna be our final tool that's gonna cut the guitar out. 
uh, this larger tool is going to give us the clearance we need to make sure that the spindle doesn't hit any of the uncut stock. And we'll be leaving tabs behind so the guitar body should stay right where it is and we'll manually cut those out after. Now I can remove the stock and body from the machine. I'll prop this up and I'll use a couple flexible saws to cut the tabs and remove the body. And that's our machined body. As Jeff mentioned in part one, there are a few more features we need to add manually. Primarily the hole that's going to run between the front and rear pickups. And we need to create our electronics cover, but other than that, this body is ready for sanding, finish, and assembly. On behalf of Jeff, myself, and the entire team here, we hope you enjoyed seeing this project. We certainly had a lot of fun making it, and we'll be looking to do a future video showing how to build on these techniques and make a hollow body guitar. If you have any suggestions for that video or other videos you'd like to see, please leave those in the comments below. And as always, we encourage you to go to cncrouterparts.com for more information about this and other machines that we offer. In this video, we used a ready-to-assemble Benchtop Pro CNC machine kit, the 4-axis digital plug-and-play electronics, and a 2.2 kilowatt spindle and VFD.